My ultimate goal would be to actually sit an exam and to put a pen into my hand and open an, the brown envelopes with your papers in it and to fill out an exam. Oh, that'd be great for me. And just get, even get back A or B, that'd be great for me. Because it's just something I never had. Sleeping on top of the wood. Sleeping on top of the wood. With great understand what the story is about. And you know what the whole story is about. In case that would prove my, my look out my thing. I'm more confident in myself now than I ever was. So I, if you give me something out to read, I'll try my best to do what I can, and if I'm stuck now, I'll ask for help. If you had to do this in your own time in the evening, it'd be a bit more difficult. People return to learning for many different reasons. Some want to brush up on their skills, others want to learn new ones. This week, we're going to join the Return to Education class at the Orchard Centre in Cherry Orchard as they organise a trip to Newgrange in County Meath. We'll follow the group as they try out their map reading skills, book the trip over the phone, and write a letter to confirm all the arrangements. Course coordinator Peter McKay explains the background to the course itself. Well, it, it is about gaining, uh, gaining people's confidence back and uh, a lot of the students who come in at first suffer from low self-esteem and um, low confidence. By improving their confidence and, and their low self-esteem, it uh, allows them to, or empowers them to improve themselves. When I first came in, I only knew one person, that was Margaret, and I was just more sitting on my own. I didn't want to mix with anybody else. But then when I got to know all the girls then, I got more confidence in myself. I could talk to them. But it seems now that I'm, this is my second year now and I'm hoping to build up that confidence more. We join the class over a cup of coffee as they decide on a location for their latest trip. So I'm after getting there, as I promised, the list of historic, heritage sites there for historical sites around the country. So if you'd like to have a quick flick through there and just see which one that you would like to visit. Now we do need to have it fairly near Dublin because we haven't, we don't have to go too far. Now I don't want to influence you but personally I've visited Newgrange up near Mead and it is um, an old historical site with very old tombs in it and it's very interesting to look at. But if you pick out one or two we can see we have a little vote. Is this, one here? Is this the one here in New Newgrange? Is it? That's it there, yeah. yeah. So do you want to pass it around and maybe have a quick look at it? Is there any vomiting? Yeah, that looks... It looks I'd nice like to go there now, Peter. Would you? Yeah, I'd like to go there now. So is Newgrange okay for you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, take as, your award. Peter. So as... <laughs> oh yeah, we take your award. So as part yeah. of the exercise, um, I'd like each of you to take on a different, uh, different task. So can we nominate somebody that would maybe make the phone call to them? Margaret. Margaret. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So it's a great that Margaret would do it. Yeah. Would well, that means I have to look up the telephone number in Aldergrove? Yeah, they'd be in the office inside there. Oh. And um, so do you know what you would like, what you have to ask them when you ring up? I'd have to ask them about the times it's opened and it's going to be, say, about 10 or 15 of us going yeah. together and how much would a group cost us to go in and we get a discount off it. Yeah, and that's very yeah, good. Yeah, so if you push the thing on a discount. We'll probably give us a bit more. They give you a bit more spending money, yeah. Oh, so we'll be all right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, there's a there's Is a, a cafe there as well. There's a little cafe there as well, yeah. So you have to have some tea and I sandwiches. Start, yeah. Now there's a little map on the other side. So, would anybody know which road you would have to take to go up to it? I mean, here we are here in Dublin. Oh, here. Yeah. They're here in Dublin. So we'd have yeah. to take the N1. Do you, do you see where Newgrange is here? Yeah. So it'd be the N1. Yeah. And what town would you have to pass through before you get to? before you get up to Lusk. it. Lusk. Yeah, and the other small one there is... Valbriggan. Valbriggan, yeah. yeah. And so you'd be And then the leave was down to Newgrange. Yeah, there should be a sign up there to mm. uh, indicate over to Newgrange. Mm. I'd like to go there now. Okay, so if Margaret goes and organises the phone call, um, was, would somebody volunteer to write a letter and confirm it to them that we're on our way? Yes, I would. Would you do that? Well, that's great, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Finding out where you want to go on a map can be a difficult task for anybody, so here are a few tips which might help you along the way. There are many different types of roads. On most maps, you'll notice particular letters and colours. They're there to help you identify main and secondary roads. Motorways are usually shown as a thick blue line and the letter M. National routes by a green line with a white text and the letter N. And finally, regional roads by a white line with black text and the letter R. When you're reading a map, you'll also need to know which direction you're going in. Instead of using right and left, maps use north, south, east and west to indicate direction. North is always the top of a map, south is at the bottom, east is on the right and west on the left. Excited, especially the men. Go up and give it a go. I've always been afraid. You're only, only feeling yourself if you don't go. You know, look at me. We might have learned something. And um, instead of giving me more confidence in myself, I'm going to a supermarket now and again. Things that I couldn't, I wouldn't know what to take. I wouldn't be able to read, but I can read. We can look at now reading. We can pick out what I want in the shops. The week before I went to the classes, I was hopeless. I had to ask someone in the shop. That made me nervous. I'd like to say, anyone, doesn't matter how old you are. Even 60 years of age. Back to school. Um, well, the reason why people might be reluctant to come to the course uh, would be um, they would suffer from some form, or they think they would be embarrassed in meeting other people. But uh, once they meet the rest of the group, they will understand that everybody's coming from the same uh, background and the embarrassment is eliminated very quickly. I think people are actually afraid of everyone knowing that they have a learning difficulty and they'd be ashamed to walk out the door and say. Peter, how will I go looking for this number in this telephone book? Well, if you look here in the book, the government departments are all the, divided into the green pages there. Yeah. So if you look at the green pages here, it is gives each department by by name. You see here the Department of Agriculture, Food and World Development. Oh, yeah. So the one we're looking for is the Department of Arts and Heritage. So we're looking for the National Monuments and, and Historic Properties. So we just go down to we come to Newgrange. Yeah. And across from Newgrange you can see that number there, 041. Yeah, 041. That's a prefix for County Mead. Yeah. And then followed by 988 Zero three zero zero. Yeah. So it's O four one. O four one. Then nine. Nine. Eight eight. Eight eight. Zero. Zero. Three. Three. Zero zero. Zero zero. Yeah. Hello. Is this New Grange? Yeah. This is Margaret O'Toole ring from Cherry Orchard Centre, and uh, we're just wondering, could we? Uh, book the tour for the day. Yeah. Don't mind who I speak to? Mary, that's grand. Um Mary, I'm just wondering, um, could you actually tell me what time is our open from? Nine thirty to six thirty. Yeah, that's grand. Could we book it please? Yeah, for fifteen of us. Yeah, and uh, is it a discount off and down? Yeah. And but to twenty second Monday 22nd soon? Yeah, that's grand. Thank you, bye. As we've seen in previous programmes, the telephone book is organised into different sections, and these sections are then organised alphabetically. Margaret was looking for the number of Newgrange Heritage Site. At the beginning of the phone book, all government and public authorities are listed in a green section like this. Because Newgrange is owned by a state organisation, the Department of Arts and Heritage, Margaret and Peter looked for this department in the green section of the phone book. Newgrange begins with an N, so they knew it would be near the end of this particular page. And across from Newgrange, you can see that number there, 041. Yeah, 041. That's a prefix for County Mead. If you're phoning somewhere looking for information, it's always a good idea to have pen and paper ready to take down any important notes. First, Margaret gave her name and where she was calling from. 
Then she asked who she was speaking to. This is a good idea as you will have a contact name if you need any further help after the first call. The person's name was Mary, so Margaret wrote this down beside name. She then asked the opening hours of Newgrange and wrote those beside where she'd marked opening hours. In this case, it was 9.30am to 6.30pm. She booked a trip for 15 people and asked, would there be a discount? It's never any harm to ask this, as some places offer this for large groups of people. Margaret then asked for a date which suited the group, the 22nd, and luckily for her, it also suited Newgrange. So, with all the information she needed, Margaret booked the trip for that date. I can see the difference now, even in the kids' homework, which I could never help them. Like, do you get the, the young one now, she's going to school with half of her homework wrong. But now, since she's had to go in, she's had to get in the seat saying that her work was excellent, that she's approving her work. And I, I don't know whether it's because of my help or it was just herself. But my family all said it was because I was helping her, which I could never help her. But now that I'm helping her, it seems that she seems to be coming on more than what I was ever like. Well, I didn't know anything about the courses until I went for an interview with a job. The first sent me up to Cherry Arch for an interview with a job. And the lad up there, he was explaining to him at the hospital administrator, I can't read and read, but I'm not afraid to walk. I'll do anything. I said, I'm not afraid to walk, but I can't read and read. And he said, but there's a course going in Cherry Arch. I said, would you not go on? I said, we don't, we don't know anything about that. We never knew about it. We would have known about the courses. We'd have gone with them. You know what I mean? We'll tell you since I started this course, I had very used to them all. Great help. But I thought we'd never knew anything about it. See, Matt? <laughs> Not that Peter, I wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do that. But through you, Peter showed me one. <coughs> you were amazed what I could do. I started to walk up to Sheldon Hotel. And uh, I, when I went for the interview, I, this girl handed me a form, and she filled it in. I said, I can't read and write. She went, OK, she went, that's no problem. She said, um, can you clean? I said, yeah. She went, can you use mop? I said, yeah. She went, can you sweep? I said, yeah. She went, that's it, she went, you have the job Monday. And then I discovered that I used to get myself involved in courses and, and the people in the courses was advised me to go to school and learn how to read and write and I got in contact with Fox. And I think it was from that courage I got that she didn't knock me straight away, that she filled in the form then and I started to walk then Monday. And then I gave up the job and then I went to walk and steward through Fox. I had no problem with telling the people in stores that I had a learning difficulty and they backed me up 100%. For those who are having difficulties with the communication skills, the idea is to improve their skills so they could avail of the various training courses that FOSS have and which could lead to uh, jobs eventually. Hey, just send it. Did you manage to write the letter? Yes, to confirm the booking? Please, sir, just to sign it. Let's just in there now. So you have the name and address, or the address, yeah. Okay, yeah. and the girl's name, Mary, that's correct, yeah. yeah. I'd like to confirm the telephone with Margaret is correct, yeah. again, on the 22nd. And we're after arranging a discount of 10%, yeah, no, that's great, so the total cost is £22.50. Yes. So all we have to do now is write a cheque and send it up to her. Oh, okay, so will I just sign it? Just sign it there now, and we'll send the cheque up to them, yeah. Mm -hmm.